The following program was produced for the Alliance of State Car and Truck Renting and Leasing Association, Incorporated, as a service to the transportation industry. Hi, I'm Billy Parsons. In 24 years of racing stock cars and one NASCAR Winston Cup championship, I've learned plenty about the importance of having confidence in your driving, on the highway as well as on the racetrack. By confidence, I mean knowing that you're prepared to handle any driving situation that might come along. But there is one situation that many drivers dread, one so buried in myth and rumor that even some of the most experienced drivers believe it can't be handled. That situation is the rapid loss of air in a tire, a blowout. Here at the Nevada Automotive Test Center, hundreds of drivers have learned what they should do in the event of a blowout, just as I have in my many years of racing. One thing they've learned is that we shouldn't necessarily be using the word blowout, because even though a rapid air loss situation can be noisy, a tire can also go flat due to a long, slow leak. But perhaps the most important thing they've learned is that having a rapid air loss does not automatically mean losing control. We're here to show you that you can maintain control of your car if a rapid air loss situation should happen. The important thing to remember is that the way you maintain control is the same for a variety of situations including flat tires, a crosswind, or a high crown road. Now, we're not here to offer you a guarantee. What we're going to show you are simple ways of maintaining control over a vehicle by applying established physical principles that have been effective over the years, if you use them quickly and properly. Now, obviously, we can't deal with every possible set of circumstances here. But if you watch and listen to what we have to say and use the techniques properly, they will help you maintain control of your rig in air loss situations. Keep in mind that the principles governing what happens after a tire goes flat are the same for every type of vehicle, from a front wheel drive car to a rear wheel drive sedan, to a four by four or light truck pulling a trailer, you handle each vehicle according to the same rules. First, let's take a look in slow motion at exactly what happens when a tire loses air quickly because that's all the blood is really, a tire that goes flat in a hurry. When it does, the front corner of the vehicle will drop, creating a side force. This side force depends on such factors as tire road resistance and vehicle dynamics. Although the car will continue to roll along on the wheel and the deflated tire, the driver needs to compensate for this new side force. What do you do to maintain control? The answer is under your right foot, no not the brake. In fact, panic braking is the worst possible thing you can do. Taking your foot off the accelerator is the second worst. The real solution is stepping on the accelerator. Getting power to the drive wheels means maintaining control. The accelerator is your best answer when there's some force pulling the car to the side. But wait a minute, you say. I don't want to go faster. I want to stop right now. I'm going for the brake and hard. When you do that, you may lose control. One of nature's basic laws says that an object going in one direction, such as a car on a highway, will keep moving in that direction unless it is acted on by a new force in a different direction. In our diagram, the size of the arrows represents the magnitude and direction of these forces. A rapid air loss creates a new side force. Unless the driver compensates for this side force, the vehicle will move in a new direction. By stepping on the accelerator, the driver starts to compensate. He completes the compensation by making a steering correction. If you think about it, you deal with these external side forces all the time when you drive, especially in crosswinds or on some high crown roads. All you do is step on the accelerator and correct with the steering wheel. There is no difference when a front tire loses air. 
As the tire goes flat, a new side force begins acting on the car. By stepping on the accelerator and correcting with the steering wheel, you maintain control of the car. Then choose when and where to pull off to the side of the road. In the case of the front tire air loss, the obvious concern is its effect on the driver's ability to steer. When the tire goes flat, the car wants to turn in the direction of the flat tire. As the driver steps on the accelerator, the added power applied through the drive wheels allows the driver more time to make the necessary steering correction. Watch again and notice just how much steering correction is needed. Now, when we say step on the accelerator, we aren't talking about picking up speed rapidly. After stepping on the accelerator in an emergency, you should be able to diagnose the problem and get the car stable before you gather up any significant extra speed. One other point about stepping on the accelerator. If you drive at full power, you have no power in reserve. Always leave yourself some extra power to deal with unexpected situations. On the other hand, if you step on the brakes in an air loss situation, you lose the forward force that allows you to maintain control. The car becomes much more vulnerable to the new side force. Without the forward force, you will be much less able to control the car. For the purpose of this program, we are creating blowouts in the tire sidewall using detonation cords. In slow motion, we can see what happens when the tire loses air. From the creation of the hole to the settling of the car on its wheel and deflated tire is actually just a fraction of a second. Until that settling occurs, the car will keep right on going as if nothing had ever happened. When the weight of the car comes down on the wheel and deflated tire is when the driver begins to feel the effects of the new side force through the steering or the ride. This is when the driver must take action by stepping on the accelerator and steering as necessary to maintain control. Now, let's compare front and rear tire air loss situations. The important thing to remember is that you handle both situations in the same way. The key differences lie in how they feel to the driver and what effect they have on the behavior of the vehicle. Controlling a rear tire air loss situation calls for the same driving technique as a front tire. With one important difference, when a rear tire loses air, the driver still has two good front tires for steering. But the rear tire air loss can be deceptive. When the tire goes flat, the car's bodywork is likely to shift in a direction opposite the flat. This shift gives the driver the impression that the car is changing direction, when in fact the front wheels are still pointed straight ahead. To prevent creating a problem where there is none, the driver should always be careful to step on the accelerator first, then correct with steering only if necessary. Getting power to the wheels means the rear wheels will follow where the front tires lead them. You maintain control of the car, then choose when and where to slow down and pull off to the side of the road. Again, stepping on the brakes is the worst thing the driver can do. No matter whether the tire that loses air is a front or a rear, you deal with each situation the same way, by stepping on the accelerator, followed by steering correction as necessary. Never give up on an air loss situation either. Even if it has caught you by surprise, you can still keep the situation under control. When you stabilize the car, you can keep driving it as long as you need to. The rules for controlling a car in an air loss situation are the same in any weather. On any kind of road, even in a curve, step on the accelerator and steer as necessary but these rules do make demands on the driver. Using seat belts is vitally important as it maintains the driver's stability in the seat. The proper placement of hands and arms is also important. Many of today's cars are equipped with front wheel drive, a nearly ideal format for dealing with an air loss situation. Combining power and steering in the same axle up front offers lots of advantages in terms of power and directional control.
what you've seen here are deliberate tire blowouts, created in a controlled environment for our cameras. Today's tires are better than ever, and the chances are that you probably won't ever have to deal with a rapid air loss situation. Just remember these simple rules. At least once a month, check your tires with an accurate tire gauge and ensure correct inflation pressure. Proper seat and hand position, use of seat belts and good driving habits will give you a head start in dealing with any situation. When you hear, feel, or see something wrong, maintain control of the car first, then find out the cause of the problem. If the problem is a front tire, you'll probably feel it through your hands on the steering wheel. A rear tire affects the ride, so you're more likely to feel it through the seat. No matter which kind of flat tire you're dealing with, you maintain control the same way. Step on the accelerator and steer as necessary. As we said at the beginning of this program, tire blowouts have been the subject of myth and rumor for too long. You, the driver, are the critical factor. In your accelerator and your steering, you have the tools to handle a blowout. Fourteen years of testing here in Nevada tell us so. The drivers you just watched have learned to follow these simple rules. You can handle an air loss situation just like they did. Thanks for watching and drive carefully.